So we've already looked at um, equations in slope-intercept form, right? That's when we talked about them with graphing. Now today we're going to look at how do we use point-slope form to actually write an equation. So yesterday most of the equations were written for you. You had to do a little bit of solving for y um, to get it ready to graph. But today now we're going to actually do all of the writing of the equations. And we're doing it using what's called point-slope form, okay? So, before we can get into what point-slope form is, let's quickly review what slope is, okay? Yesterday we said, or in 2, 3, we said slope is the change in y over the change in x, okay? We also said that that was the same thing as delta y over delta x. So, delta y over delta x, that was using that Greek letter for change. We also said it was rise over run. Okay? Then the final way we looked at it is kind of what we need to talk a little bit about right now, which is the slope formula, which takes two ordered pairs and finds the difference in the y's and the difference in the x's. Okay? So this is if we are given x1, y1, where that's an ordered pair, and x2, y2, another ordered pair. Okay? Notice when you do this slope formula, the ordered pairs line up. Okay? The x1, y1 line up, so whatever one you choose first has to go first, whatever one you choose second has to go second. You need them to line up. You can't do y2 minus y1 over x1 minus x2. The order matters. Okay, so finding slope this is something you've done before, but just a quick little refresher on what slope is. We use that, we use that with point-slope form. Okay, point-slope form is another way to write an equation for a line. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. It's called point-slope form because in order to use it, you need a point. You need an ordered pair of some sort. And a lot of times we see that ordered pair written as x1 comma y1, just two numbers. We also need the slope, m. And what we do is we substitute in there, okay? So let's take a quick look at an example. Let's write the equation of a line that passes through one, three, And 4, negative 9. So we want to write that equation. Whenever we want to write an equation, it's easiest to start with it, writing it in point-slope form. Okay? We need two things to make point-slope form happen. We need a point. Well, we have two points here. We're covered. We also need the slope. So first thing we got to do is we have to find the slope. Whenever you find the slope, you might find it easy to number the ordered pairs. x1, y1, and x2, y2. Okay? That will make it easier for when you actually have to plug in to the formula. Okay? y2, take away y1. Well, y2 is negative 9. Take away y1, which is 3 over x2, 4, take away x1, which is 1. Okay? Now when we simplify that, we get negative 12 over 3, which is negative 4. Awesome. We had the point to start. Now we have the slope. Okay? So we've used point-slope form. y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. We have two points here that we're working with. So we have 1, 3, and 4, negative 9. Both points will work to substitute into the equation. I like to pick the point that has the fewest negatives. Okay? You have choices, but I like to pick the point that has the fewest negatives. So I'm going to use x1 and y1 up here, 1 and 3. 
So y minus y1, well y1 was 3, equals m x minus x1. And that same problem, x1 is 3. You mean x1 is 1. Okay, so we substitute that in there. This is the equation if it asks for it in point slope form. If it said write it in point slope form, we would be done. Sometimes it asks for it in a little bit different way. It asks for it in slope-intercept. Well, we all know how to write it in slope-intercept because that's what we practiced in 2-3, was solving for y. So if it asks for slope-intercept, we solve for y. Okay, so the first thing we would do is the distributive property. There's the distributive property. Notice negative 4 times negative 1 made positive 4. Then we'd add 3 to both sides. Now it, our equation is written in slope-intercept form. Okay, It's not necessarily that one is better than the other. You just have to read carefully. What is the problem asking you for? Is it asking for point slope or is it asking for slope-intercept? You should always start with point slope. However, if it asks for slope-intercept, then you're just going to have to take it a little bit further and finish solving it. Okay? But point-slope form versus slope-intercept form, they graph the same line. It's just a matter of the notation used and how it's written and how it's solved or how, what it looks like. Not even how it's solved, just what it looks like. Okay? If we would have chosen that 4, negative 9, we would get the same answer. Okay? We would still get y equals negative 4x plus 7. Okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to try a couple. There's three for you to try. The first one spells it out kind of for you. It says passing through a point and it has the slope. So you have point and you have slope. The second one gives you Two points, no slope. You need to find the slope. The third one gives you two points, and then this one's a little bit trickier for actually working with it. Okay, so give these a try. Start by finding the slope if you need it. Ready, go. Okay, so check your work in that first one. You were given the slope, you were given the point. All you had to do was substitute, right? Y minus 1, because that's the Y coordinate in the ordered pair, equals 1 third, the slope, times X minus 3, the X coordinate in the ordered pair. So your answer should look something like, like that, okay? In the second one, you had to find the slope. Zero minus six in the numerator, nine minus three in the denominator, slope of negative one. When you substituted everything in, now as soon as I saw that zero, I was pretty pumped. Because I knew that, okay, with that zero, now I can... <coughs> Now I don't have to actually do much to solve it and put it in slope-intercept. Okay, so answer should look something like that. I did not ask you to put them in slope-intercept form. Point-slope form was just fine. In the last one, you had to find the slope. Slope was ugly, negative eight-thirds. Not ugly for graphing, but ugly definitely for solving and putting into slope-intercept form. Okay, and then actually when you clean that one up a little bit, you're going to want to take that y minus negative 5 and turn it into y plus 5. reason is, is because we don't deal with minus a negative. That just isn't mathematically sound. We change it to a positive. So that last one should say y plus 5. Okay, make sure that when you're doing these, you keep some of that good notation in the back of your mind. Right? When I found my slope even for that one, I had 8 over negative 3. Well, we don't usually write the negative in the denominator. We move it to the numerator. So that's why in the answer it became negative 8 over 3. It just slid that numerator up, or excuse me, slid that negative up to the numerator. Okay, so being able to write equations. If any of these fast spread in slope-intercept form, well, we would just take, do the distributive property and solve. Okay, it didn't ask for it. It might on your homework. Who knows? Okay, last thing we need to talk about kind of connects some information about slope and writing equations. 
if you know the slope of a line, or the slope of two lines, or the slope of however many lines you're looking at, the slope will tell you if the lines are parallel or perpendicular. Okay? You need to think back to what you learned about geometry. You know about parallel and perpendicular lines. Parallel lines never intersect. You should remember that parallel lines have the same slope. Okay? Parallel lines have the same slope. Part of, that's part of why they never cross. They're always traveling at exactly the same rate. They don't ever switch rates and all of a sudden crash into each other. Perpendicular lines, however, they intersect at a right angle. And when we say right angle, you all know 90 degrees. Like a plus sign, the letter T, um, two roads, oftentimes we'll meet at a right angle. Um, what else meets at a right angle? Oh, like railroad tracks, those ties that go between two railroad tracks. Railroad tracks are parallel, but the ties that they place in there are perpendicular to the actual tracks. Okay? You know what perpendicular is. You know it meets at 90 degrees, which is a right angle. What you may have forgotten, and maybe should write down, is that perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Opposite meaning that positive versus negative. If one is positive, the other is negative. If one is negative, the other is positive. Reciprocal meaning, turn the fraction upside down. If it's a whole number, it becomes 1 over that whole number. If it's a fraction, the fraction just flips over. So if you're looking for a line parallel, you're going to use the same slope. If you're looking for a line perpendicular, then you use opposite reciprocal slopes. You can write equations of parallel lines and perpendicular lines if you figure out the slope. If you know the slope, you're kind of unstoppable. Okay? You're kind of a big deal. I'm also going to talk about lines that coincide. Is this another word for you? Coinciding lines, they are absolutely, totally, 100% identical. That means their slope is the same. Their y-intercept is the same. And what makes them kind of boring is they're the same line, okay? Which means, of course, the same equation. Not nearly as exciting. More excited about parallel and perpendicular, so make sure you hang on to that information. Okay, we're going to do lots of practice with writing equations of lines, talk about solving them. You're going to be awesome. It's going to be fantastic. So make sure you got this. We'll talk about it more in class.